This conference will now be recorded. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 10, uh, I believe, of Behind the Mask with a Hospitality Leader. Um, today, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined um, by my business partner, the amazing Dawn Redman uh, from Hospitality Jobs UK and H&R Recruitment, um, an absolute ambassador for recruitment in hospitality, um, as well as hospitality uh, as a whole. Um, and I've got to say, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be a business partner, Dawn. So uh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, actually, really well. I'm looking forward to this, telling you how I feel about some things. So um, I'm looking forward to the interview. So yeah, really good, very good, very positive, very upbeat. <clears throat> good stuff. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I like about you, John. Um, and I will brace myself for the honest answers. So let's uh, let's kick off with um, as as a hospitality job board and recruitment business owner, um, I uh, I understand it. Uh, it's been tough. Um, care to tell us a bit more? Yeah, uh, so I have two businesses, both in hospitality. So I've been in uh, in the hospitality sector for about 13 years with a recruitment agency, h and Recruitment, uh, and then for the last five years, Hospitality Jobs UK. Um, so what have I been up to? Um, well, I think anybody that knows me knows that I'm quite a positive person. I'm really positive. I keep motivated. I keep strong. I'm optimistic because I think that's, my, that's the way I've been made up. Um, and I, and I was, everybody knows I'm pretty honest as well. Um, so I think I do that for my own sanity to keep positive and to keep motivated. Um, and sometimes I'm like that because I need the energy to bounce back to me. Um, how have I been keeping busy? I've done loads, or we have done loads as a company. But, you know, from uh, h and Recruitment, just re wrapped our website to make it more of a generalist recruitment agency, target, target more on head office positions. Um, and for Hospital hey, WK, uh, we were partnered with uh, Jane Tagan with Hospital Live, where myself and you were doing webinars every day, uh, giving a sound advice, moving on CV, anything to do with recruitment. I'm a pure recruiter, like you, Nick, we are pure recruiters, and I love being a recruiter. It's such a rewarding job. Uh, so I did some, uh, we did some stuff with Hospital Live, also with HIT Training. So with HIT Training, <clears throat> we launched and uh, and supported them to try and to encourage people to come into, young people to come into the hospitality sector. So we advised them on their, uh, anything from CV writing to uh, covering letters. Uh, and that went up to around about 120,000 uh, individuals uh, ready to do apprenticeships across the UK. We did a conference in lockdown. Um, the conference was amazing. Um, I love the conference. Uh, it really pulled me and took me to a place I've never been before. And I didn't know anything about how to run a conference. So I hooked up with a chap called Sam Chance from Montgomery Group. They run HRC, which is Hotel Restaurant and Catering Show, which used to be Hotel Olympia. So I hooked up those guys and they made it simple for us. But I was really proud to have at any one stage just under 1,200 people on our, on our conference, which I was glad to that, that, you know, that people would, wanted to hear. But, but we had a really great lineup and it, everything from mental health to training and some great individuals. What else have I done? Uh, I project managed uh, for only a payment away a online job board for them, uh, and it's really about actually it's very different from a normal job board. It's actually connecting clients with their candidates. Um, I judged at the Neaters, which for the BII, so I did some judging at the Neaters, and I did some judging with hip training. So um, yeah, I've kept myself quite busy really. Oh, and I got a cat. Got myself a cat. Um, yeah, I know. And uh, that was surprising because I've never had a cat ever in my life. Uh, and she's a princess and she totally dominates the house. And um, it, it, she's amazing. I know it sounds, I know it sounds oozy, but she's amazing. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I did. So, uh, so, so very busy and, uh, and a cat. That's, uh, um, and it goes on. I, I know you've, um, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, doing things you've not done before, that virtual conference, which uh, in fairness, you, you kind of, ran with and, and led um it's fair to say um was um uh, it was incredibly humbling i think for, for 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 all involved to have that um that volume of response and uh yeah, anyone that takes the themselves so far out of their comfort zone um on you know all given occasions which i know you do um gets uh, gets my respect for sure so um so yeah um yeah bloody good effort um uh, the other thing about you Dawn, i suppose is that you are a, you know you're, you're a genuine and caring person um which in my humble opinion makes you best in class i hope you don't mind me saying um what uh, you know? What have you found hard? What's broken your heart? I suppose um, you know throughout this ordeal. 
okay, so put them on the spot here. What's, what's, what's broken my heart? Um, sadly, uh, there's two elements of this. Uh, people element, really sad that um, I've had people that have gone through it who've had coronavirus. I've had coronavirus myself. My family had it. It knocked me out for four days. And I didn't realise that you... I did realise how bad it was, but I'm quite fit and I'm, you know, I'm in early 50s, so I thought I'd be fine, but it literally wiped me out. But I didn't have the normal symptoms either, so it took myself and my partner and my daughter by surprise. Um, but I've had a couple of friends that have lost family through it, and that whole process of not really, um, what made me so sad is they couldn't, as I feel, they couldn't really grieve properly. Uh, that's made me incredibly sad. And the fact that I just can't hug people. I'm a hugger, I like hugging people. I want it my friends, I miss my friends, I miss my family. But I do know I need to go through, and everybody needs to go through this process to get us through this. Um, the other thing, the business perspective, what makes me sad is my, my clients that have become my friends that they've lost their businesses. And it's it is just so sad that I've known people that have remortgaged against their, their their businesses, and and I've had people on the phone crying to me saying, you know, it's it's crap, and trying to keep them motivated, trying to let them try and see there's a silver lining. But it's incredibly sad, and I, I have broad shoulders, and I have a good network around me, so I'm in a really good position to keep people motivated, and that that's what I I do. But that's the, it's the people element and the business element of my friends losing businesses yeah uh, it's um it is a it is a it's a horrible situation for a lot of people i think um you know i know you've uh uh you know, been battling to to keep keep the businesses afloat as well so to um to to empathize with other people i think it's part of your part of your character um uh and it is a it is a toughie it's a toughie but as you say we'll you know we're going through a process we've got to go through that process um to come out the other side so um you know that said what um what's annoyed you about decisions that have sort of happened um, from above in regards to the potential scapegoating um, of hospitality industry done. That what's annoyed me. I, uh, so from a business perspective, what's annoyed me is I feel that the government have um, tried to do their best for small businesses uh, and for some of the larger businesses. The furlough has saved a lot of businesses that would have potentially gone under. So that's the positive, but what has annoyed me is that I feel as a, a business owner, and I think a lot of suppliers and a lot of smaller businesses will relate to this, is that uh, you, you don't pay yourself a salary, you, you rely on dividends on a quarterly basis. And if your business isn't profitable, then you don't get no dividends. So what the government has done, it's looked after, it's, it's missed out this big core of about three million middle people. And those people are actually keeping people employed. Uh, and I feel a little bit frustrated about the government with that. I also feel for the hospitality sector, they really, you know, they've done the furlough. They really need to look after, look at the rates. I know they've given rates grants, but they need to look at the rent and the rates for every site across the UK. They just need to support them. I know they've given the government, has given the hospitality sector 5%, you know, they can charge 5% VAT instead of 20%. I think that may end, they may extend it. So what's annoying me is also the fact that they are dangling carrots. We can open, we can close, we can open, we can close. And I, I can imagine so many especially christmas time that you get yourself geared up the, the sites of investing money in marketing investing money in, in, in rolling out their christmas venue bringing ordering food but the knock-on effect it has everybody talks about the hospitality sector health bars restaurant hotels but also the knock-on effect it has the suppliers because they people would have been you know pubs and bars would have been ordering food or restaurants would have been ordering food from farms from uh from uh you know, the likes of everything from breaks to 3663 to Reynolds, they've been ordering all this food, then all of a sudden they have to they have to cancel it again. So yeah, it's annoying me. Um, I don't think the government, you know, or has just done the best he can, I think. Uh, you know, upon reflection, no, you know, he's been put into this situation that nobody knows what to do. Um, and as a small business, he's supported me uh, well, but it's still incredibly tough, you know, I'm going to give you an example, Nick, you know, being really transparent. As a recruitment agency, you know, we have, you know, made two placements since March last year. That is just, you know, there's no money coming in and, and people owe us money, but we can't knock on their door because we know they've got no money. So it's supporting mm. them in the way we can. Uh, from a job board, it's, it's flipped. It's quite exciting because people want to use a job board because they don't want to use agencies. And also they recognise that, 
and what I'm really proud of is that we we've remained pure, a pure hospitality job board. So it, it, but it again with the support of the government, the grants and everything. And I've been on the phone and I've been online trying to do it. You have to jump through hoops. It's not as easy as they say. So yeah, that's that's what annoyed me. Um, I will say that Kate uh, from UKH and Steve from BII and Emma from BBPA together united they've done an amazing job uh, and I do think that um, they're fighting for us constantly so um, yeah that's that's what's frustrated me some of the elements of it. I hope that's answered your question. Yeah it has it's very very honest honestly as well uh, with a very honest approach even. Um, which, um, which I think is, you know, it's, it's crucial. I mean, you know that um, um, this, this series of Behind the Mask is about, uh, it's about real openness. And I think that, you know, touching on a couple of points, um, you know, from a leadership perspective, I suppose the government's decisions have been meant that you've been able to look after people, um, but it doesn't necessarily uh, help you individually. Um, and I get that. Um, I think the, um, you know, the, the struggles that um, that everyone have are all, you know, all relative to throw in the whole, you know, we're all in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Um, so different, um, uh, di different pressures really. So, you know, to get that honest answer, to, uh, to one with, um, it's what, it, what it's about really. Um, it's about kind of having that, um, that realistic um, approach to, to coming through this. Um, and, and talking of which, I mean, I think, um, you know, hospitality is always, you know, it's been in the spotlight a lot, as you mentioned, um, uh, uh, Kate, Stephen, and Emma doing, do, and Emma doing the, um, you know, the, the one voice has been, it's been the well, campaigning, um, seat at the table, etc. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not going to say what my views are, but what, how do you think hospitality will come out of this? Um, and as well, uh, for the next request, are there enough female leaders um, in hospitality? So firstly, um, how do you think hospitality will come out of this? Okay, I think hospitality will thrive. Uh, the in there's going to be a, um, it's going to be tough for people that have lost businesses. I think they will thrive again. The first thing people want to do, I think, is when they come out of this lockdown, because I know that what I want to do is go to a pub for a pint, go for out for lunch, uh, uh, just go and stay a night away. And you know, I'm optimistic. I've booked three holidays this year. Whether it will happen or not, I don't know. But one thing I really miss, and I is. When I go for a walk, everybody's walking. I'm not walking to anywhere. My highlight is walking to Tesco or, or Waitrose or, or Martin Spencer. I want to walk to a pub. So do I think it'll be, uh, do I think we will come, we'll come out stronger? I think pubs and bars and restaurants have thought differently the way they're actually delivering, whether it's takeouts or, or but I think it will come, but I think it'll be about April time. I think it'll be Easter. And I think that's when it will turn around and um, I will be there to support as much as I can. And, um, and I know they'll be there to support us as well. Yeah, uh, I'll be with you on that one, Dawn, uh, as, uh, as, as I have been for um, uh, the last year and a half, I think. Um, you know, I think the the, um, you know, the branding project that we did, I hope it's all right to say this, um, it is all about supporting hospitality and you yeah. know, the whole supply chain um, is uh, is absolutely crucial and reliant and actually on its knees to a certain extent. I think that there's going to be a lot, you know, there's always winners and losers, Dawn. I think that the, um, my, my view um, on that is that we have um, there, there are people that are um, you know being very respectful um, in terms of their optimism for the future and where the businesses are going to go. Um, and that's and that's right that's right to do so. Um, it, it's very much about watching this space and the guys that are struggling um, will no doubt pick themselves up and yeah. um, and and sort of carry on that way anyway. So um, female leaders, Don. You know, being a female leader, um, uh, what's what's the balance? What are your views? My views are, and uh, probably I'll get shot for this, uh, my views are, so quite simply, um, the way the, the female leaders are changing at the moment. Everything's changing in, in, and it changes. I think it has a sort of five year cycles. So I, there are some great female leaders out there and I don't want to mention any purely because I know I will miss some. Um, but the female leaders in, in the hospitality sector, what, what everybody's got to remember is when you go out for a Sunday lunch, it's normally the females decided where you're going to eat. When you go away for a weekend away, it's normally a female that's decided to just where you're going to go. Not that I'm talking about the majority of the time, you know, it's it's led by women where where you go for a drink, where you eat, where you where you go. I'm not talking about going to a pub after work. I'm just talking about the sector where women actually make that decision on a Sunday roast or weekend away. So I think there should be more female leaders, but I think there are female leaders coming through. I'm not a pink fluffy person, you know, I'm not, you know, I think everybody should have, you know, pink cushions and everything should be really lovely. I think if somebody's capable of doing the job, it's irrelevant whether they're female or male. But I do think 
that women are coming through because they're more available now and uh, they're a little bit more mature because they've had their kids my kids are 27 and 22 um so but even when they were young i was working absolutely working if my nuts off because not because i wanted to be a female leader because i am passionate about what i did so for me female leaders there needs to be more there will be more but i don't think it's going to be a woman right thing there should be more leaders if they're not the right person for the job then they shouldn't be a female it should be a male so it should be the right thing but women are coming through child care is changing but more importantly what people want now uh, is everybody wants more out of life and uh, and because they want more out of life they recognize that two full-time incomes is so much better than one full-time income and you have child care so i think there will be uh, more leaders and i think i hope in 10 to 15 years time it won't be a hot subject of where are the female leaders i think we will be up there yeah i, I hope so i hope so i think it's a definite transition um uh, you know point in time at the moment uh I definitely i saw a twitter comment um regards to the first four behind the mask were, were male uh, obviously i spoke to the amazing sam from temper and wendy from um Barla mitchell and, and now yourself um and looking forward to, to more conversations but i mean in the past it was it was very male dominated um and it still is to a certain extent which is why i think it's still a, a reasonable you know it's, it's still a um a positive but tough topic um but I, I take what you say there doing in regards to the uh who's you know who's right for the position who's going to do a great job i think that balance um is, is only going to be good for um operations and the industry as a whole um and um and the skill set will, will kind of lead the way really um yeah the opportunities very quick, yeah very quickly Nick. if i look at recruitment i would say 50 50 male female if i look at hr i would say you know roundabout is probably 70 percent women 30 percent male so it's actually it, it's evolving because i think you know men could turn around and say well actually you know i want there should be more men in hr there should be more men in this particular area i think it, i think it's becoming more even and i think you know we are recruiters so we will drive that you know we are all about the right person for the right job is irrelevant I can, you know whether it's male or female it's the right person for the right job so i i'm a big you know when you start me on i can go on forever about female leaders and there's some amazing ones i can think of the top of my head and beforehand i should have written a list of the people but you know if we talk about one female leader right at this very time it's kate nichols UK mm -hmm. she's and she's leading it and she's leading it for everybody in the hospitality sector uh, so mm -hmm. we talk about female leaders and lots of people doing it lots of people talk about there isn't enough and i know that's one of the things you want to do with behind the mask to actually showcase these female leaders they're amazing and i love the fact that they run a household they run a family and and they have their business but don't men do run households as well and men do run families as well so it isn't all about the woman you know them. so um yeah we we we'll be coming up. I'll be there. I'll still be there. Hopefully. Yeah, still, you're definitely still be there. I'll be there with you, Dawn. I'll be there with you. Um, uh, absolute pleasure, uh, partner, to be uh, to be chatting. Thank you for joining in and, and agreeing you. to do this. Uh, I know it's a very alien concept being on that side of the interview, so uh, I'm in my comfort yeah. zone here. Welcome. It does but, feel uh, weird when you ask me questions. It feels like, what do you ask me questions? You know the bloody answer. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's always great, you know, to, um, and happy to do it. And if, it, if anyone can take one thing away, um, then uh, that's great for me. Work hard and uh, have some have some fun as well. I think that's the uh, the sense oh, of humour of it. So, uh, right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say cheerio, and I will no doubt speak to you very shortly. Um, yeah. Thanks again, Donna. So, thanks, Nick. Bye now, see you.